let's talk about how individuals develop an allergy to penicillin. So we have to learn about penicillin, and we've got to learn about uh, two different types of hypersensitivity reactions, type 1 hypersensitivities and type 2 hypersensitivities, because individuals can develop uh, different sensitivities based on the type of antibody they produce that would recognize penicillin. So in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, we've mentioned that that involves IgE antibody being generated against an allergen, in this case penicillin, and we know IgE plays a role in mast cell degranulation. For type 2 hypersensitivities, or type 2 allergic reactions, that involves generating IgG antibody isotypes to the allergen and recognizing the allergen um, that is attached to the surface of cells. So usually type 2 reactions, hypersensitivities, allergic reactions, um, involve the antibody recognizing cell surface molecules. And we'll see why this is bad in a minute. But first we want to talk about penicillin and its normal role in fighting infection, right? It's an antibiotic we extract um, from a fungus, you know, synthesized in the lab now. The mechanism of action of penicillin is that it inhibits a bacterial enzyme called transpeptidase. So here is a bacteria and the bacteria requires the enzyme activity of transpeptidase in order to maintain its membrane integrity. The way penicillin functions, its mechanism of action, is it forms a covalent bond with the enzyme, the bacterial enzyme at transpeptidase. When penicillin covalently attaches to transpeptidase, transpeptidase no longer functions as an enzyme. So now the bacteria lacks this enzyme activity and the bacteria cannot maintain the structural integrity of its membrane, so the bacteria will not replicate um, and we will be able to defeat the infection. That's how penicillin helps uh, humans. But penicillin can also generate an allergic reaction in some individuals. How does that occur? Well, at first, uh, it involves the fact that penicillin can covalently attach to other things in our body. So when we take in penicillin, it can covalently attach to transpeptidase. That's what we want. It can also covalently attach to molecules on the surface of our red blood cells or erythrocytes. So we don't want this. It doesn't bother our red blood cells, but penicillin can attach to them. While we have an infection going on, we got a bacterial infection, most likely complement is being activated, either by the alternative pathway or the classical pathway. Some pathway of complement most likely is activated during a bacterial infection, so bacteria are being covered in complement, hopefully, complement fixation. Now, some bystanders uh, also get complement on them, so some red blood cells might be in the area of a bacteria, might also get accidentally decorated with complement. So there's some C3B attached to the surface of red blood cells. Again, it doesn't really bother red blood cells. They can still carry their oxygen just fine. Um, unfortunately, macrophages, we know, have complement receptors on them. Now, we want these complement receptors to engage complement on the surface of pathogens, but the macrophage doesn't care where complement is. So if it's using its CR1 receptor to bind C3B on the surface of, of red blood cells, it's going to phagocytose or opsonize the red blood cell and it will destroy it. And actually macrophages do this all the time. If our red blood cells are damaged or um, things are attached to them like complement, macrophages in the spleen will bind the red blood cells and phagocytose them and destroy them and recycle them. That's fine. What's not fine is that when it breaks down these red blood cells, penicillin is attached to proteins on the surface. So now we have peptides that have penicillin covalently attached to it. So the phagolysosome breakdown of the red blood cell doesn't necessarily remove the penicillin molecule from the peptide. So what can occur in macrophages? Well, antigen presentation. When macrophages bring in extracellular antigens via phagocytosis, they will process those antigens and load them onto MHC class two molecules. So what are we loading here? We're loading proteins and uh, we're loading peptides from the red blood cells. Now this is the self peptide. So hopefully our T cell receptors have been trained to ignore self peptides. And hopefully you remember in the thymus what that process is called, right? That is negative selection. We should select away for any T cell receptors that bind our peptides. 
So probably we don't have peptides with T-cell receptors that bind to this peptide. But this peptide is covalently attached to penicillin. Have T-cells been educated, trained to ignore this peptide? They have not, right? They have not undergone negative selection because this molecule doesn't look like a self-peptide. This molecule looks a little different than a self-peptide. Different enough that there may be a naive T-cell with a T-cell receptor that has an antigen binding site that actually binds this peptide. And if that's the case, then this T cell could activate and it could turn into a TH2 cell or a TFH cell and promote, um, we'll see in the next slide, a B cell um, activation. So the first step in generating an allergy to penicillin is to generate a T cell receptor response that recognizes a penicillin um, modified peptide. And, that, and you can see hopefully how our proteins and the, in fact our peptide can be modified with penicillin. That's the first part of this. The second part involves having a naive B cell that has a B cell receptor on its surface, an immunoglobulin, that has an antigen binding site for penicillin. So we know the uh, immunoglobulin on the surface of naive B cells it has two antigen binding sites, and how are the antigen binding sites created, right, through VDJ recombination, junctional diversity, the combination of the light and heavy chain. And so we can make billions of different antigen binding sites for antigens we've never seen before. So is it possible that we, uh, that a person makes an antigen binding site that fits the penicillin molecule? Absolutely, right? B cells have not been screened out for via negative selection to ignore penicillin. So when penicillin is in our bodies, it is quite possible that we would have a naive B cell that would recognize penicillin. But we need a T cell to activate this B cell, right? So this B cell is binding penicillin. It would need to show something to a T cell in order to get to permission to activate in a thymus-dependent manner. So the B cell internalizes the penicillin-modified uh, protein, and it breaks it down and it presents this penicillin-modified peptide to T cells, the one from the last slide, a Th1 cell or a TFH cell. And that T cell has a T cell receptor that has an antigen binding site for the penicillin-modified peptide. And so this T cell says to the B cell, yep, you know what, that peptide uh, doesn't look like it belongs, that molecule doesn't look like it belongs in us, unleash an attack. So the T cells, the effector T cells will release cytokines to do isotope switching. And if we're talking about a TH1 cell, it would preferentially isotope switch to IgE, or a TFH cell, it could prevent preferentially switch to IgG. And so now what we have are antibodies to penicillin. Penicillin, not a pathogen, but it's got caught in the crossfire. So we just happen to make an immunoglobulin that recognizes penicillin. We just happen to have a T cell receptor that recognizes the penicillin's modified peptide. We just happen to have an MHC molecule that presented this peptide. And now we are stuck with antibodies that bind penicillin. Not a good thing. If we're talking about the IgE antibody isotype that recognizes penicillin, what does IgE do? IgE binds um, FC epsilon receptor 1 on the surface of mast cells and other um, granulocytes, basophils, eosinophils, when they turn on their FC epsilon receptor. And so now we have mast cells covered in antibodies, IgE, that recognize penicillin. So an individual who has a type 1 hypersensitivity to penicillin, when they are exposed to penicillin, that leads to mast cell degranulation. And what's going to happen? Release of histamines and other inflammatory cytokines will can cause uh, massive inflammation all over the body. All right? So we're talking about mast cell degranulation in many organs and tissues because penicillin is in our bloodstream and individuals can go into anaphylactic shock and die from this type 1 allergic reaction to penicillin. That's a type 1 hypersensitivity response if an individual makes IgE to penicillin. Individuals can also instead, usually it's one or the other, um, it can be both, but uh, let's talk just about a type 2 hypersensitivity to penicillin. So that's an individual making IgG 
that recognizes penicillin? How would this harm a person? It would actually harm them differently. So let's say that, you know, we've got a, you know, we, we generate, the person generates IgG that binds and recognizes penicillin, and years later they get treated for an infection and the healthcare provider prescribes penicillin. They take it in, the penicillin is fighting the bacterial infection. Penicillin is also going to get uh, attached covalently to red blood cells. It just happens. Penicillin is in the bloodstream, red blood cells are in the bloodstream. Um, penicillin reacts with proteins on the surface of red blood cells. So now we've got red blood cells covered in penicillin, and these antibodies are going to bind penicillin. So when IgG covers uh, something, what does that do to it? Right? Well, in a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, which is defined as IgG binding some molecule on the surface of cells, that can trigger two responses. So it can trigger um, antibody-mediated opsonization. So we know macrophages, which are in the spleen, um, have an FC uh, gamma receptor, and anything covered in IgG will bind FC epsilon receptors, and the macrophages will phagocytose the red blood cells and destroy them. That's one thing that could happen. We also know that the one way IgG helps fight infections is recruiting complement, specifically the classical pathway. So if you recall, the CR1 molecule binds um, IgG and triggers the classical pathway, which leads, in to, which leads to covering the pathogen, although in this case red blood cells, with complement, also initiating the production of the membrane attack complex. So we are attacking our red blood cells because they are covered in IgG because they are covered in covalently attached penicillin. So in a type 2 reaction to penicillin, what happens is that red blood cells are destroyed in individuals who are taking penicillin. And they suffer, uh, instead of anaphylactic shock, they suffer from hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic anemia. So anemia is um, right the... Uh, when oxygen is not being delivered to our organs and tissues. Hemolytic anemia, right, you can suffer from anemia because you're iron deficient. There's iron deficiency anemia. Hemolytic anemia is we are destroying our red blood cells. That's why we can't get oxygens to our tissues. And in this case, a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, we are destroying our red blood cells because we have antibodies, specifically IgG, that bind and recognize penicillin. So these are two possible mechanisms by which a person could generate a, an allergic reaction to penicillin.